own personal history. I think it's fair to say that since the end of World War II and increasingly in the most recent decades, we have managed to create the world's first truly global empire. And it's the first empire that's been created primarily without the military. It's been created by economic hitmen, by people like what I once was. And we work many different ways, economic hitmen, but perhaps the most um, common is that we will identify a third world country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil, and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sisters. But the money never goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects, power plants, highways, industrial parks, things that benefit a few very rich people in that country, as well as our own corporations, but don't help the majority of the people who are too poor to buy electricity, don't have the skills to get jobs in industrial parks, don't own cars to drive on the highways. And yet those very people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt so that it can't pay for education and social services and health care for its people. In fact, the debt is so huge by intent that at some point we economic hitmen go back and we say, listen, you owe us a lot of money. You can't repay your debt, so sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies without regard to the environment. Vote with us on the next critical United Nations vote. Send troops in support of ours to some place in the world like Iraq. And in that way, we've created this empire. On the few case times when we economic hitmen fail, um, as I talk about in, in the books, as I failed in, in Ecuador with Jaime Roldos and in Panama with Omar Torrijos, then the jackals go in. And these are men, maybe a few women, who overthrow governments or assassinate their leaders. So if I'm, not, if I'm unable to bring them around, if the economic hitman is unable to bring them around through legal means, what we do is we use legal means through the World Bank, but it's basically corrupting the leaders of these countries. If we're unable to corrupt them, then the jackals go, over, go in and take care of them. So when I failed with Jaime Roldos in Ecuador and Omar Torrijos in Panama, the jackals assassinated them. And if the jackals fail, which is what happened in Iraq. Both the economic hitmen and the jackals failed with Saddam Hussein. Then, and only then, does the military go in. So this is the first empire in the history of the world that's been created primarily without the military. The military only is a last resort. And I think there's something extremely dangerous about this. It's not just that it's pathetic. It's not just that it goes against all of our most sacred documents. It's extremely dangerous because we claim to be a democracy. And a democracy is built on the assumption that the electorate is informed. And if the electorate doesn't realize what we're doing internationally, if the electorate doesn't understand the main basis of our foreign policy, which is what I've just described, then the electorate is not informed and therefore cannot vote intelligently. And therefore you even have to question whether we're truly a democracy. Forget about